Hello, everybody. Uh, it's not 11 yet, but be happy to get started uh, to perhaps have some of your questions answered. But we, we're still early, no worries. Hello, everybody. Everybody, uh, it's uh, 11 a.m., so I should get started, although I'd be more than happy to wait a few minutes uh, for some other participants. Um, thank you for being with me today. Uh, I wish we could have a in-person uh, open house, but um, when this activity was planned, we weren't sure whether uh, such in-person gathering will be allowed or appropriate. Uh, so that's why we're having a uh, virtual session. I am broadcasting from one of our labs. I think we have eight labs. Uh, and this is one of them. Uh, this is considered a, uh, a geotechnical engineering lab, uh, also known as soil lab. So. Uh, Actually, I'm, I have a cart. I can move this around. We have an adjoining lab uh, next door. Yeah. But uh, what I like to do is to uh, first uh, go through briefly, maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of material. And then I will be more than happy to answer uh, any of your questions. Um, again, it's 11. Welcome all to uh, this uh, virtual open house. Uh, so I believe uh, you had watched the a short, maybe eight minute video produced by the department chair, uh, Dr. Laura Sullivan Green. Uh, but I will very briefly go through the slides, uh, adding my comments. Um, for those of you who wonder who I am, uh, I'm, I'm the acting chair for the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department, acting because Dr. Sullivan Green is on her well-earned and well-deserved sabbatical leave for this current semester. So I'm uh, standing in literally uh, 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 for her. Um, I've been affiliated with the Department of Industrial and System Engineering. Uh, I also have been uh, associate dean for the college uh, for extended extended studies. In that position, I took our uh, graduate programs to Silicon Valley uh, companies, uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, KLA Tencore, Lamb Research, and other uh, companies. Um, and I'm taking over uh, just for this current semester. Uh, and I was not officially uh, affiliated with the department before, but uh, my research area, area overlaps with uh, some of the research area of this particular uh, department. So I uh, would love to use this opportunity to provide a view, not only from within the department, but also from a person who has a different engineering discipline and providing something perhaps more objective uh, uh, for you to uh, consider. Uh, if, uh, let me go through very quickly uh, the hope. Okay, what I'll do 
I was to share, I'll, no, I'll share my screen with you uh, so that I can, you can see, uh, but, okay. So uh, the previous slide uh, was the, uh, yeah, Dr. Sullivan Green. Uh, then here, this department offers the six specialty areas. Um, going from water resources, ge geotechnical, for example, this particular lab, soil lab, and adjoining lab. Um, also, we offer a specialty area in construction. Transportation, that's where I uh, am tied, tied closely to this department. Structural engineering, last but not least, uh, environmental engineering. And I will tell you that uh, this particular uh, session is, is sort of providing you a backstage view. So rather than those things that are obvious uh, stated in the website, uh, I'd like to provide a little bit of background from a backstage point of view. The accreditation agency on civil engineering requires only four areas, specialty areas, but we have six. A reason why we're doing that is that um, we have an eye to the future career of all civil engineers. Now, there are two things that typically uh, civil engineers would achieve in their career. One being professional engineer. Uh, the other being a precursor exam, which is uh, fundamentals of engineering uh, exam. So let me then focus primarily on uh, the uh, fundamentals of engineering exam first. There are several exams. Two of them apply to our major, civil engineering and then environmental engineering. Uh, by the way, can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Glad to have you all. And if you click on civil engineering, uh, then you will see a number of test areas or areas of, for questions. And you will see you have construction engineering, transportation engineering, geotechnical, structural, water resource, and environmental. So we have all six specialty areas although we were required to have only four. Now, let me get back a little bit. And if you look at environmental, yeah, there's another uh, test dedicated to environmental. Of course, you will see a number of things that are under uh, stated underneath there. So our desire in, from the backstage point of view, we wanted to prepare you well for the, your future career in this exciting, exciting uh, area and exciting era of this major. So let me go back to the, the slide. Uh, so, yep, again, uh, want, this is something happening in the background. So the, the program here wanted to develop or even derive our course curriculum based on your future career needs. Uh, okay, so then I think, you know, <laughs> Dr. Sullivan Green provided these bullets. Uh, in my mind, um, coming from the background of system engineering, um, I had uh, actually been thrilled to be leading this department for this current semester, because in my mind, honestly, there's no other more important engineering major. Take my word for it, of course, that's my perspective, but I can say it from a person having majored in different disciplines. Right? So, yeah, of course, uh, Dr. Salem Green had, Green, uh, had uh, listed all this. My point is that if you look around you, everything has its roots in civil engineering. Just, just, just look around, okay? Uh, and, and I think, no, I'm, I, my undergrad major was mathematics. PhD also something called operations research. I came from a major where I had to take five minutes to explain what my major was. 
to a major that requires no explanation. Just take a look around you. All right, so that's very exciting. I think uh, uh, this is a critically important era. Uh, now, so here uh, you may recall seeing these pretty bad grades uh, uh, assessed by uh, American Society of Civil Engineers about the infrastructure of the US. Uh, you, know, you can see that the, these will not get you, if you got these degrees, you won't get your degree here, right? Anyway, so what I'm trying to add, add is, is that, uh, you know, yes, we needed major, major improvements, but uh, at the end of last year, the, uh, the, the Congress uh, passed the uh, Infrastructure Investments and Job Act, Act. and uh, uh, President Biden gladly gladly uh, signed it into law. One trillion dollar, uh, of course, it will not solve all the problems, but that's an excellent start. So uh, hopefully you'll see that uh, you see the new renewal emphasis on civil engineering at the national level. Uh, and I, I think that you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, a, a, the need for a sustainable world for the next generations to live. And I think it's upon our generation, my and yours to make sure that, that it happens. So to me, again, I cannot think of a more important major uh, among all engineering disciplines or perhaps among all disciplines, not just engineering disciplines, All right? So, uh, so we have six areas of specialization. Uh, so you, you can read the details, but I would not um, dwell on all of those. I think you should have, uh, you most have likely have already uh, saw the video that uh, was produced and put on the web by Dr. Solomon Gray. Now you can see that, uh, you know, we have uh, these specializations. Some of them are required courses. Some of them are electives. So basically, if you want to specialize in any one of them, sometimes even multiple of them, you can achieve with your uh, uh, coursework. But I must tell you that the, at this moment, the, the, the California legislature, as well as the CSU, California State University System, uh, has decided that uh, 120, 120 units will be the ceiling and any a uh, higher credit requirement would need to be approved by CSU, the, ch uh, the chancellor's office. So at this moment, we do have a 120 unit program, but uh, we're, we're petitioning to get uh, three or even six more units so that you'll be well equipped to enter the world uh, and start a successful um, career, all right? So, all right. So, Student clubs, yeah, sure. We have uh, academics. Uh, now, a different major difference between CEE or our uh, civil and environmental engineering from any other department, including my own department previously, uh, industrial and system engineering. Typically, students uh, don't even come to our department until their third year or junior year. But uh, CEE has a a special arrangement so that uh, they can engage you uh, early uh, through you know, multiple courses, one being CE 08, which is as plain surveying, and CE 20, which is drafting and programming. Uh, of course, we, we the, at the college level, there's a course called Engineering 10, Intro to Engineering. That would also be a part of your uh, lower division, meaning first year or second year experience. Uh, we also have something called block schedule so that uh, when our students, CEE uh, or other engineering students would need to take something called the general education courses, uh, we will have CEE students enrolled in, a, in one common section of a GE course. That way, the CEEs or CE students will be able to associate with one another 
besides uh, uh, so engineering or uh, civil engineering courses, right? So academics, we're trying trying very hard to uh, get you all engaged uh, at the very beginning. And even after your first year or two, in fact, in fact throughout your study here, CEE uh, has, has retained the advising 100%, meaning that uh, you, unless you're dealing with general education course courses, the CEE uh, will have one advisor assigned to you uh, from the beginning. So we do uh, consider advising very, very seriously because individuals have individual circumstances and interests and also other concerns. So now, and I, I want to just make one more point before I leave uh, Dr. Sullivan's uh, uh, PowerPoint slides. We have five clubs, um, and the, we also participate in a number of uh, regional and also national competitions. Um, I think that uh, some of them are fun, but I think, for example, you'll see ASCE, American Society for Civil Engineers, Student Club, uh, Concrete Canoe. You may wonder, why do we use concrete to make a canoe? Many, many uh, uh, reasons. Uh, we have Chi Epsilon, which is Honor Society, Steel Bridge uh, Club, um, you know, also up to, for example, ACG, which is uh, American General Contractor Club, right? So we have all those, we have these many clubs. So the idea is that uh, in terms of, uh, you know, sort of a backstage introduction to our uh, program, uh, we not only have those academic uh, arrangements, we also have extracurricular activities that build on uh, the academics so that we have a very, very solid uh, program for all of you. And one more look at these six areas, uh, then I will uh, go to uh, sort of a little bit of my own. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so far, any questions? Uh, I will be more than happy to answer any of your questions uh, before I add a little bit to what I have just talked about. Anybody else? Anybody? If you have any question, more than welcome. I wanted to make it as interactive as possible. I was, I was even thinking to move this car along to through our all our labs, but uh, uh, but uh, I think that it may be uh, uh, it's okay. But uh, we have <clears throat> labs scattered in the first and second floor. Yes, you had a question, uh, it, Mr. Yeah. Charlie Hong. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's a simple question. Uh, how would the first and second year be like in the major? Yeah, it's a very good question. Typically, during the first two years, you will need to take some general engineering courses, okay, for example, and also you will be a need to take mathematical preparation courses. This is a very good question. So let me then bring up this particular worksheet. All right, so basically, when you enter the program, uh, as I said earlier, you will be assigned a professor uh, to, to be your advisor. And uh, you will see this uh, when uh, you get to talk with him or her. Uh, so again, here we have six different uh, areas, special areas, devising. Now, about, about your question, so we have a number of courses, some required, some not required, but if you look at the, the roadmap, for example, this is a four-year roadmap. If you look at a typical full-time uh, workload or study load, first two years, you're looking at the top, okay? You're looking at the top. So you will see a number of, uh, you know, uh, math courses, see the math courses, uh, basic physics course, uh, and then you will see, uh, you, know, you know, CE courses. Uh, are you live streaming it? Uh, by any chance? Sure, yeah. you, oh, I, uh, we can't see it, the live stream. Oh, oh, you, oh sorry, you, I'm sorry, I, I, I should uh, start sharing. Sorry about that, I, I need to flip. Uh, thank you very much, really appreciate it, okay? 
uh, you know, I, I, I'm self-centered. I, I look at what I see. I thought you'd, you'd be able to see it. So anyway, so I was talking about th this. So whenever you have come, to, uh, you know, come to start your study, then you will be assigned a uh, an advisor, and this will be a thing that you will typically typically see. So that's why this is a bad so backstage view, right? So go to uh, to come to your question. Uh, so basically. You know, the first year you have semester one and two, second year semester three and four, and then semester five, six, seven, eight for your uh, junior and uh, senior years. Now you can see that uh, during the first two years, you have a lot of math, physics, you know, and then some chemistry courses, English courses, uh, some general education courses, uh, you know, and then you also see that we have made an effort to include civil engineering courses uh, for uh, uh, just about each and every one of the semesters. So this is a roadmap. Uh, you do not have to adhere 100%, but you, there will be flexibility that you can uh, uh, you know, uh, work out with your advisor, okay? So uh, again, so if you look at that, so if you look at the first semester, you know, uh, math 30 is basically calculus. Uh, at, you know, sort of, you know, differential calculus. Uh, now, if you had uh, completed such a course uh, as part of your prior uh, studies, then this could be waived that you have to talk with your advisor. So these assume a, a, a background of a typical uh, high school graduate, but uh, some of you have taken more uh, than uh, what's required for your uh, uh, high school diploma, so you can see that the math and English, uh, you know, oral communication, engineering 10, that's introduction to engineering. And also in addition to that, we have civil engineering 08, uh, plain surveying. I mentioned that earlier, uh, then you, the second semester, you would have uh, math 31 is typically, um, uh, I would say, uh, integral calculus, uh, physics 50, English 1B, Chemistry 1A, et cetera. So you can see that uh, we have tried very hard to build in uh, some community for you when you do uh, start uh, studying here. For our first semester, um, so is it gonna be like calculus that's taken instead of like pre-calculus? Oh no, well, okay. Well, so typically this you know does not include uh, pre-calculus, but I think, uh, you know, if, if, if you want to take pre-calculus or if you need to, then you will need to talk with your advisor, right? Would, but, would uh, it be like, um, lag, like, would I become lag behind or like it's, it's just become lag behind if they do? Well, um, not necessarily. Uh, if there's only one course that you need to take before you start all this, then that can be more easily worked out because you can see that the, the total number of units will be 15, 16, you know, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. uh, 16 units is uh, routine. Uh, anything beyond that, your graduate advisor should know. So if you want to squeeze in one course, that shouldn't matter that much. Yeah, also here, we, I, we don't include any summer courses uh, because summer is not a formal term, but we do offer uh, particularly the, um, uh, the math preparation courses and GE courses, uh, I think, there are such offerings during the summertime. So having said that, let me then uh, briefly go over this. You see, we have a number of math requirements. It's required uh, for all engineering students by the accreditation or by national consensus, okay? We have some science courses and engineering support courses uh, like engineering 10, uh, and also required major courses, they're, they're here. These are required uh, because we do have six specialty areas. These will help you satisfy those basic requirements. Uh, electives, you need to choose three of them. We have a large number of uh, courses that you can choose from. Uh, and uh, then, yeah, this is a typical, but it's not a necessary, okay? Um, Roadmap. Did I answer your question? Oh yeah. Um. One more question. Will there be any oh, yeah. Will there be any internship for civil engineering? 
You know what? Uh, hope you don't mind my taking off my jacket. Uh, this is uh, the uh, one of our soil labs. Uh, it's, it's, today's pretty warm and a little dusty. So what do you expect? It's, it should be dusty in this room. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, we now have a have a 120 unit program. Uh, two years ago, the CSU, uh, California State University System, uh, imposed a, another general education requirement, which is a three-unit course on ethics. Then all departments will had to put it in, so but still within the 120 units. So what you see now uh, does not include that one, uh, but uh, we're in the process, really literally, I'm working with the faculty today still uh, to uh, include that particular um, GE requirement in our, in our uh, curriculum. We will remove one elective, but for future years, we are petitioning to increase the number of units from 120 to 123. And, but that is still being uh, discussed and uh, decided. So uh, from the perspective of a student like you, you probably do not want to have any more units than 120. We understand that. But from the education point of view, we wanted to equip you well when you, you know, roll out your sleeves on your first day of job uh, or along your career, we want you to be able to uh, from well, right? So we are thinking to have it increased to 123. So that's a long answer to your sh short question. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Sure, very welcome. Thank you for the questions. Uh, I really appreciate it. So, uh, yep. Any other questions? All right. Um, so maybe I can expand a little bit on, 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 on what I had uh, wanted to talk about. Uh, well, you know, again, I uh, got interested in, uh, in transportation, particularly tr um, sustainable transportation uh, uh, for about 20 some years ago. Um, there, of course, there's a background, so I'm, I'm an accidental acting chair of uh, civil and environmental engineering. I, I love this opportunity because I really think that, that this is probably the most important uh, major of all discipline. Now, you know, very quickly, what I, you know, you know, I got to this because I think in the, between the years of uh, uh, 1993 and uh, 1997, of course, most of you probably were not even born yet. Uh, there was a federal government uh, research effort, in fact, research and development, development effort, which was to, it's called automated highway systems. Uh, this this uh, picture, these pictures are taken at a uh, national level demonstration. Uh, it was a $50 million uh, US DOT, Department of Transportation uh, project. Uh, it died a couple of years prematurely because the issue was too tough to overcome and the management was not you know, handling correctly. I actually left the program a year before it died. Now, back then, uh, we were all so concerned about traffic congestion. Not these days because of the pandemic, traffic has become a lot lighter or, you know, I think a lot of work is moved online. But anyway, uh, it will occur, it will recur in the future. But for example, uh, they, at the time, they called it automated highway system. Uh, you know, so all these vehicles you can see, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see Okay, so all these vehicles were driven automatically with hands off, feet off, okay? Well, just like right right now, you know, you know the uh, Google or some other uh, self-driving cars uh, having safety engineer sitting at the wheel. But uh, you can see that uh, how close they were. So that actually tells us something, everybody. You know, I was a system engineer. I left my AT and T Bell Laboratories job, dealing with uh, system engineering for telecommunication. 
okay. you know, national, uh, international AT&T backbone network. I, I, I was part of that. I've been using a lot of mathematics. I told you that my, my major was math and enjoyed it. Then I became aware of, you know, I was concerned about uh, the sustainability issue for a long, long time, but then I saw the idea of using technology to help solve the congestion and also environmental problem, okay? So I jumped on it. So I then I moved back from New Jersey back to Berkeley where I got my uh, PhD degree. I joined this effort and uh, you can see that, uh, you know, usually if, according to, um, driver's manual, you'll need to leave five car or six car lengths between yourself and the vehicle in front at the speed of 60 uh, miles or so. You know how close they are? They're so darn close. I hadn't shown you uh, some other pictures, but anyway, uh, so, so the, my point to you all is that uh, civil engineering is probably the overarching discipline that need to integrate not just technology, but human culture, society, society uh, government, everything. So it's a very exciting uh, major, and it does take a, a, a degree in, in, in civil and environmental engineering to be equipped enough to deal with these uh, very, very tough issues. Uh, and also, I told you about, you know, I, I had done, you know, um, I also done some research on something called automated uh, uh, trailer steering. I mean, this is more like mechanical engineering, but uh, this happens on national highways. It's about transportation. Very quickly, one minute or two. See, all our three neighbors, states allow these so-called triples, uh, and uh, but California does not allow it for good reasons. Uh, one major issue is that these. These large trucks, are, you know, there are safety concerns, but major thing is that there's something called off-tracking, meaning that the, when the tractor moves, the trailers, particularly the last trailer, if you look at the track of that, those two axles or four wheels, they don't follow the track or the wheel marks, wheels track of the, the tractor. So that's called off-tracking, meaning, you know, you cannot drive a truck like, it's like you're driving your own car. So the driver, in order to make a left turn, has to swing to the right and then make a wide turn to the left. So, and then, uh, so, you know, we said, okay, well, but you can see that uh, you know, there, there are those issues. Um, and so, you know, I proposed a project to uh, California DOT and then I got funded. And uh, so there, we have studied this thing. We, we showed that uh, if, through computer simulation that uh, this off-tracking can be virtually eliminated, okay? Now, having said that, I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, it's well-motivated. Let's say we're all, we're all concerned about the, 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 the human, you know, uh, energy consumption, greenhouse, greenhouse and other things. Uh, these days also fuel uh, uh, prices, right? So now just very quickly, what got me the idea is just this single screen when I attended, I saw this when I attended a national level transportation conference. So I just to like to look at two numbers. If you have, uh, let's say you have a, a so uh, three axles single, but just, just straight truck and no trailers, just that uh, you can carry 40,000 pounds. The fuel efficiency is 5.11 miles per gallon. If you go all the way to the next, uh, the, to the next, the other corner, if you can haul with triples, you have three trailers, but you can haul 140,000 pounds, uh, you know, you know 100,000 pounds more, but the gas mileage is a little off, maybe not even 20% off. This is national level data. Now, when you can save fuel, you save, greenhouse gas, you save the environment. So anyway, my point being that as a system engineer or as, as a civil and environmental engineer, you have a lot of room to uh, make innovative you know, improvements and, uh, and suggestions. By the way, I'm telling you, this, this particular uh, conference was a conference about transportation, not about system engineering, my other, or industrial engineering, my other background. So let me go back to, 
uh, what I had uh, prepared a little bit here. So basic, okay, I think I was there, right? Okay, fine. So let's let's uh, then move on to just a couple other things that I wanted to uh, sort of have you take away. Uh, now, so what you cannot see or on the web uh, are things like this. For example, we have small lecture classes. Uh, typically, we will have 30, sometimes a, a few a few beyond 30 in a lecture section. Okay, and, uh, uh, and then in, the, in terms of lab, it is even smaller. We typically want to keep our lab sections to be 15 or fewer. You know, let, let's see, uh, can you see that? Uh, you know, you see this, this is a lab, and then a lab uh, for a uh, you know, geotechnical course will take, take place. You can count how many seats are there. So that's what we actually had uh, uh, deliberately uh, uh, designed it. So small lecture classes and even smaller lab sections. Just to contrast this situation with my own department of industrial engineering, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm under, under joint appointment. I am now teaching a graduate class of 109 people. Okay, so of course it's graduate, and also uh, it's, it's it's online course. So anyway, I'm just telling you that these things you don't see, but here you can see it clearly. I can I'll be able to move to the other room shortly. Uh, so now we we emphasize hands on education and what you may not see unless you dig further is that, for example, um, CEO a plane uh, surveying it's a three unit course, just like any most other courses just three unit, but it has it involves two hour lecture and a three hour lab okay so we do emphasize hands on education. You know, just to uh, make our education as relevant as possible and as intriguing as possible uh, for your career, right? And we have many student clubs. We have competition terms, uh, uh, teams. Uh, I actually had a website. Uh, yeah. So here, uh, let me then go to another website which I had uh, collected to uh, to tell you about. Uh, yeah, so I think, bear with me. Uh, yeah, so uh, this uh, this is you know you know basically we had three teams. Are you agree with me? We had three teams competing in a national uh, 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 competition. Uh, well, uh, granted that there there are quite a bit of other uh, uh, university teams. But uh, you can see that just that one conference, we have three teams. See, you know, faculty advisor, Dr. Jay Pyong, uh, he, he actually is on sabbatical leave as well. We have heavy civil, commercial, and design build. And uh, so you know how many people are involved, students? Yes. Uh, so let me go to the top. It is so, uh, associated schools for, of construction. Okay. So it took place. Earlier this year, uh, all the three teams went. I believe that uh, the, our faculty members were able to get funding for them to travel. Okay, uh, so lots of activities. I just told you, you know, I just want to, you know, I mean, you need to dig a little further to get to know these things. So that's why I thought that we wanted to have a backstage pass for you. Um, so let me then go back there. Uh, many student clubs and sometimes you have other not so obvious career opportunities you know i i have been bombarded by email messages announcements about the uh, the need to bring attention to students uh the career opportunities in something called facility management okay uh, in fact the reason i was involved was that uh, several several years ago uh you know when i was serving as associate dean for extended studies. Again, as I said earlier, I basically took our existing or we developed new master's programs for individual companies. We take our courses there. We, our professors, go to Silicon Valley companies and teach there. So now in that process, I was exposed to uh, some other career opportunities and I was bombarded by email messages calling for <laughs> help to publicize this particular uh, 
profession, which is facility management. You know, if you look around in Silicon Valley or elsewhere, it's so many large high-tech factories, okay? And also, not to mention, we have many uh, large sports facilities. And somebody has to design it, has to, you know, operate it, has to uh, deal with uh, the management issue. So then somebody has to do it. And among other disciplines of engineering or among all disciplines, it is us, the civil and environmental engineering that can provide that kind of uh, uh, expertise uh, with our undergrad education. Of course, if you wanna get in there, they will gladly take you, but you may need to take, you know, a very small number of certification uh, courses to, become a certified facility manager, right? So I just wanted to make sure that the, by the end of the day, uh, I will be able to uh, at least provide you several major takeaways. In addition to what the Dr. Solomon Green had uh, uh, said in that uh, eight minute video, also in the uh, few slides I just showed you earlier, there are several important takeaways. Uh, sorry, there's about six of them. I wanted to keep them down at three, but I think they're all important. First, again, I think it's really the most important engineering major of all of sustainability of this world. Uh, and also, we have a 2021 Infrastructure Investment and Job Act, one trillion US dollars. Six areas, not just four, uh, paving the way for your professional uh, engineer certification and also help you uh, pass or prepare for the uh, fundamentals fundamentals in the engineering exam. We have small lecture classes or even smaller lab sections, okay, 30 and 15. We, we, we will add new sections if the number of students exceeds uh, these limits uh, you know, by few, really, okay. Again, compare it to my other duty, which is ISE. And as I said, I'm teaching a class of 180, 109 graduate students in a class, but it doesn't happen here. Civil engineering, it does not do that. And hands on education, lots of emphasis on labs. Uh, and not only, you have, not only do you have uh, very good hands on education in, in the classroom, you will have many uh, opportunities to participate in extracurricular uh, activities. And also, I just talked about some not so obvious career opportunities, not just that facility manager, just one example, right? So, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I am actually in this room. Uh, you know, I think you can see that, uh, hopefully I'm not sure what, what you can see. You can see, you can see that. So we're, we're, we're in this room. I took, a, took pictures of, uh, of uh, our labs. Uh, uh, you know, the other night, uh, so that I wouldn't disturb any classes. Uh, and then I can see that you, you, there's some other, I think this is the highway, this is pavement lab. Uh, and uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is, uh, oh, this is the hydraulic uh, lab. Uh, in fact, I do have a number of pictures that I've taken, but depending on interest, I could go through them. Uh, Otherwise, uh, I would just leave them to your uh, questions. So now, before I move, uh, let's let's just do one more thing. Uh, so yeah, we talked about uh, concrete canoe. Uh, Dr. Uh, Aktam Almanasir uh, has been um, the pioneering force behind all that. You know, so it's it's excellent opportunity. Uh, I'll talk about him a little bit later. Uh, now, there are two more pictures uh, about this uh, example. Yeah, so it's the uh, you know, San Jose State University. And also, uh, this is for doing their uh, test runs. Um, this one, uh, we actually took it to uh, a local uh, lake. I can see that this is a concrete uh, canoe, right? So uh, I probably would then tell you a little bit about fa our faculty. As I said earlier, uh, I had very recently, just a week ago or two, nominated Dr. Uh, Aktam Almanasir uh, 
for the top award, uh, faculty award of this college. Um, he's an amazing person, uh, too many things to say, but he is a, 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 an author uh, uh, for a textbook called Structural uh, Concrete. And it's in its seventh edition. It's a Bible, okay? Uh, so I think uh, he is not only um, dedicated to academic studies, applying for research funds, doing uh, research projects for you know, California Department of Transportation or national or FH, FHWA or USDOT. He also gets, uh, uh, you know, has some training courses for thousands of uh, um, California uh, 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 civil engineers uh, who would want to learn about structural uh, concrete, right? So, um, and we got dedicated uh, faculty members. We have small classes, we have clubs, and uh, hopefully you'll have an excellent uh, education here. Of course, I must tell you everybody, meet us halfway, okay? Don't think that you can come here and then will deliver a silver platter to you. We got to meet in the middle. You make your effort, we all make our effort, and we'll meet in the middle, we'll be a happy family, okay? If you have any questions, do not hesitate, okay? To uh, to, 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 to ask me, and uh, by the way, I had not told you yet, uh, I actually will be happy to uh, take you around later today if you, happen to live nearby and you want to come to campus and I will have a meeting with uh, two teams of graduate students for a class project at 12 but uh, hopefully it will be over in one hour so if you like to travel here uh, if you can we can make an arrangement uh, I can then go to the door and uh, you know lead, lead you in but uh, but that's if you are interested. Otherwise, you know, please ask me any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I won't leave until everybody has left. Okay. So please. Yes. Yes. Please, Elizabeth Wayne. Thank you. Please appreciate it. Yeah. Go right ahead. In fact, you don't need uh, to raise your hand. You just speak. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And uh, when should we take the FE or the PE exams? Okay, well, PE tends to be later in, in, in the career, okay? Uh, now, FE, well, actually, what you can do is whenever you're ready, you can take it, okay? But there's fundamentals in, in, in engineer. Of course, there's a civil engineering uh, a you know, a, a branch. So uh, you can take it whenever you have completed the required courses. You can, in fact, but there's no rules saying that you have to take them you know, within a few years of uh, graduation with your college degree. There's no such thing. You can take them anytime, but I would encourage you to take them when the memory is fresh, okay? And which means that the, the moment when you have finished all the required courses uh, or finished courses that would answer, help you answer those required questions, take them, okay? While your memory is the freshest. Not sure if I answer your questions. It's flexible. It's, there's no, I mean, that FE or PE, those are not requirements for this department or for this uh, BSCE program. No, it is for your own profession. Okay, now facility management has its own uh, sort of certification, certification courses. That obviously uh, is not part of the requirement. You can take it anytime you wish. I mean, there are, there are other certifications though, okay? Did I answer your question, Elizabeth? Yes, thank you. Well, very welcome, very welcome. By the way, I, I offered to, to each, you know, take you on a personal or on a in-person tour, but because our, our buildings are locked. Uh, so I, I, we have to make arrangements so that I can go to the door, uh, the lobby or somewhere to, to take to greet meet you and then take you around that you you cannot get in without uh, any uh unlocking mechanism 
or without anybody unlocking it for you. Now, different campuses operate differently. I, I, yesterday I was at UC Davis. I learned that uh, there's not even mask requirement in a classroom. At this moment, uh, we're we're under uh, Santa Clara County's uh, guidelines. Although although Santa Clara County has relaxed the mask rule, but the university uh, continues to uh, adhere to it. The only requirement is mask in a clock a glass uh, in a class meeting. So if you have your designer mask, bring it along. Otherwise, we have uh, uh, masks at the lobby. So okay. Any other questions? Thank you for the questions, Elizabeth. Thank you. Well, maybe I can move around a little bit. I'm not sure what you can see. Maybe I can uh, turn off the uh, sharing so that I can see. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not sure what you can see. Yeah, I think I can see what you now can see. Uh, this is our uh, uh, sort of a soil lab number one. Uh, a number of, uh, a num a number of uh, equipment. Um, oh, I had a quick question. Sure, of course. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I always do that. In my, uh, um, yeah. Are there any um, tutoring centers for upper division courses, or is it mainly just for lower division courses? Well, uh, it's a very uh, good like, question. A very good question. So now, uh, so it, it, it depends on the needs. Uh, the, the university has a, um, they call it peer connection. They don't call it tutoring. So basically, peer connection means that uh, you know they they hire uh, students who have completed uh, some courses um, so that they can provide tutoring or provide some assistance who will need them. Yeah. So I'm not aware of any uh, sort of restriction on you know, the, the level, lower division or upper division. So basically, uh, I, for example, I have recommended some students to help uh, tutor uh, upper division courses. I have, oh, sure. So there's absolutely no no, no restriction. So now the can, again, is that if somebody has the need, then uh, the, the, the person will then go to the peer connection, uh, then make a request and they, most likely will seek out uh, candidates who can provide that service, okay? Again, as I said, I have personally recommended some of my uh, graduate students uh, to uh, provide service uh, to peer connection uh, for um, upper division courses, for sure. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good Thank question. You. Thank you. Yeah, this is a uh, second uh, geotech lab, uh, sort of a, yep, you can see this uh, seeds. Uh, oh, so yeah, pretty exciting. Sort of uh, reminds me of uh, Gold Rush days. Well, wait, will they have um, an online tour or is it only in person? Uh, online tour, I- Is that a thing? Or... Well, I believe that uh, if you sign on to the Welcome Center of San Jose State University, which is not run by College of Engineering, it does have both, I believe it has some virtual tours. It also has in-person tours. I've seen them uh, frequently these days. Uh, San Jose State has opened up in a way. Uh, probably, I think, three weeks or four weeks ago, we went back to the original teaching mode uh, with the exception, exception of the masking rule. Uh, so yeah, we are in person as long as the courses have been designed as an in-person class. Uh, now, college of engineering, I'm not sure whether there's a virtual, virtual tool for the entire college. Uh, some departments have their uh, so videos but I'm not aware of such a video for our CEE department. Okay, apologize for that. Um, but uh, we thought.
thought that we will be able to get back to in-person mode. Uh, but uh, when we made the announcement, it was not uh, possible. So again, as I said, you know, if you want, I'll be more than happy to be here uh, and uh, I'll be available at one. If you can make it, if you live nearby, you can come to our campus, uh, you meet me at the engineering lobby. I'll, I'll unlock the door, I'll take you in. I have to guide you. I have to, it has to be a guided uh, or uh, uh, yeah, tour. You cannot just come in and, and roam around. You cannot do that, but I will be happy to be with you and take you to all our labs and to tour the entire building, but it has to be a guided tour guided by me and not allowed, not, not, not for somebody to roam around, okay? Yeah. Any other questions? Did I answer your question? Charlie, did I answer your question? I thought it was your question, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, very welcome. Very welcome. Yeah. But you need to let me know because I, I will um, I will I have attend to other matters if nobody is interested. By the way, that's uh, the um, my uh, contact info. Yeah, this is my uh, uh, web homepage and that's my email address. You have to email me or, you know, or tell me before we end the session so that I can prepare for that otherwise i would have other mat other very urgent matters to attend to yeah yeah but, yeah any other questions please that's what i'm here for I, i've been excited to to host this session um yeah hey would love to tell you uh, uh whatever you have in mind i would even venture to tell you something that uh we may not uh, want to reveal, okay? But the, I think this is a very serious decision on your part. Uh, you have all the rights to understand what you're getting into, okay? All right. All right, sure. Oh, well, thank you for attending. Again, I'm here always until everybody has left. Okay. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Jacob. So oh, very much. Welcome. I think you are set. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I think uh, CC is the closed caption person, right? And yes. then you. So it's yeah. just basically us, and nobody has signed up until unless they email me. Then I'll be signing off then, right? So maybe yes. I'll, I'll, I'll wait until 12, so that just in case somebody will pop back in to, to, to make an arrangement. All right? Okay. So I'll stay on for four more minutes until everybody has So you don't have to stay out. Okay, okay. sounds good. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you for setting up. Thank you, bye.